From Ally McBeal to Arrested Development, Portia de Rossi used to regularly grace our TV screens. However, in recent years, she's retreated from the spotlight. Here's a closer look at why you rarely see Portia de Rossi these days. Portia de Rossi had a long journey to reach full self-acceptance. One of her first steps on this path was the empowering act of giving herself her own distinctive name. Portia de Rossi was born in Australia as Amanda Rogers. Although less memorable than her chosen moniker, her birth name wasn't incompatible with fame. But the rebranding went much deeper than careerism. De Rossi has commented that changing her name at 15 reflected her struggle to reconcile her sexuality with an as-yet unaccepting world. As she told The Advocate, In retrospect, I think it was largely due to my struggle about being gay. Everything just didn't fit, and I was trying to find things I could identify myself with. And it started with my name. She picked her first name, Portia, from Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice, and chose De Rossi because it sounded exotic and sophisticated to her. De Rossi started out in commercials before transitioning to a few small silver screen roles. At that time, she was a young student at the University of Melbourne studying for a career in law. Her first credit was in a low-budget Australian comedy called Sirens that came out in 1994. Though De Rossi's role was not a main one, the film received attention because it was one of three films released that year that raised Hugh Grant's profile with American audiences. In 1998, De Rossi landed the part of Nell Porter in Ally McBeal. This character was known as the Ice Queen, while also serving as a form of comic relief, an early example of De Rossi's talent for playing difficult personalities to humorous effect. In order to both create her own identity and cement her career as a respected American television actress, De Rossi had to demonstrate a colossal level of commitment. One of the pivotal moments in her life was her marriage to filmmaker Mel Metcalf in 1996. By this time, De Rossi was a rising star and wanted to stake a permanent claim in Hollywood. To do that, she needed a green card. Her marriage served the dual function of securing her future as well as veiling her struggle with her sexuality. De Rossi says she couldn't go through with the green card scheme in the end, but the fact that she considered the option is a testament to how important her career was to her at least back then. She took all kinds of transformative measures to solidify her Hollywood reputation, even training herself out of her Australian accent while living in Los Angeles. And then, I'm gonna be Trailblazer of the Year. Portia de Rossi's career commitment had to weather some pretty heavy discouragement over the years, as some of her career choices didn't go so well. Maybe the weight of her disappointments eventually took their toll and led to her disappearing from Hollywood altogether. As we've seen in the case of Arrested Development, quality doesn't always equate to wide viewership. The surreal satirical sitcom Better Off Ted starred De Rossi and began airing in 2009, when Portia was fresh off a recurring role in the successful medical drama Nip Tuck. Sadly, Better Off Ted was canceled the next year, despite praise from critics and a cult following that was unfortunately too small. Of course, some of her ventures were clear missteps, such as Mr. Sterling, which only made it two months and ten episodes before being cancelled. De Rossi's attempts at crossing over to film were mostly unsuccessful as well. She appeared in Australian production The Night We Called It A Day, the poorly reviewed Wes Craven flick Cursed, and a few made-for-TV movies. In addition to the aforementioned failures, some of De Rossi's endeavors never had the chance to get off the ground. One in particular that we would have loved to see had NBC not pulled the plug was a potential Munsters reboot all the way back in 2012. From the looks of its pilot, it could have been a hit. It also would have constituted a bit of a reboot for her career after producers decided Better Off Ted was Better Off Dead. Instead, the show's cancellation was both costly and conspicuous. It's so horrible and it's not true. It's easy to imagine De Rossi as Lily Munster in Mockingbird Lane, the first episode of which aired as a Halloween special in 2012. It had the option for a series pickup, as well as a huge budget and years of planning. But NBC declined, robbing us of yet another hilarious Portia de Rossi character. Lily Munster is a literal vampire, but unlike the cold, dead personality for which the mythical species is known, the elegant Lily is benevolent toward humans and deeply loving and caring toward her family. If this high-profile spot had stuck, we might be seeing more of De Rossi today. While many of De Rossi's projects are critically loved for their uniqueness and cleverness, they don't always fare well enough with audiences to avoid cancellation. 
Outside of Arrested Development, De Rossi's most recent appearance on television was in 2017. She played another quintessential Portia character in a guest appearance on Netflix's Santa Clarita Diet. When she portrayed a socially awkward doctor who spends so much time studying the dead that she's forgotten how to interact with living people. This critically acclaimed cult favorite began at 78% on Rotten Tomatoes and climbed 11 points each season for a 100% rating in season 3, which is when Netflix decided to cancel it. Though De Rossi hadn't had a huge role at that time, critics called her the show's secret weapon. Unfortunately, this saga reads like so many of her ventures that deserved better. Her roles are an acquired taste, perhaps because she presents us with traits we're supposed to hate, and forces us to love her anyway. De Rossi's roles represent her own unapologetic authenticity, and her later successes attest to that. In Nip Tuck, she played the mother of villain Eden Lord, remaining loyal to her despite knowing what she's done. And on Scandal, De Rossi was a strong, intelligent woman who did whatever it took to get what she wanted. In addition to showcasing her versatility as a formidable comedic and dramatic actress, these roles showcase her strength as a person. Despite a preference for privacy, she has used her status as a celebrity to become a voice for many vulnerable populations. She opened up about her struggle with an eating disorder in her book Unbearable Lightness, A Story of Loss and Gain, and is also an active champion of animal rights. As one of the first openly gay women in Hollywood, she lent courage to members of the LGBTQ community. It was a challenging road to self-acceptance. For a long time, she refused to publicly discuss her relationships or sexual orientation. She opened up about her private life only after she began dating Ellen DeGeneres in 2004. De Rossi is very aware that while she didn't choose to be gay, living her life as an openly gay woman was a choice she had to make. While it appeared that De Rossi's decisions had taken her on an upward trajectory, leaving her with a successful television career and a loving relationship, something happened in 2017 that threw her career into question. When her dynamic character on Scandal went out with a bang, killed in her office with a golf club. Elizabeth North's death was a notoriously shocking one for the series. When someone leaves a show in such dramatic fashion, fans are often inclined to wonder whether there is something deeper going on. Was Hollywood done with Portia for good? Part of the shock factor derived from the gruesomeness of the killing, but most of it sprang from the fact that no one saw it coming. Many deaths in drama series come as surprises, but De Rossi had just been elevated from recurring character to series regular in the previous season. It seemed like things were looking up and that she was becoming an indispensable character. De Rossi was only the second series regular to be killed off the show. According to an interview she gave with showrunner Shonda Rhimes after her character was killed off, it was De Rossi who made the decision to leave. The two have nothing but good things to say about each other. Rhimes describes herself as a longtime fan of De Rossi's and wishes she could hang on to her forever. Meanwhile, the act revealed that she loved Scandal, but chose to leave because she found a new career direction she was excited about, of which Rhimes was totally supportive. And so De Rossi left Hollywood quietly. She since revealed that it was her choice to retire, not just from Scandal, but from acting as a whole. She spoke more about this decision on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, explaining that as she approached 45 years old, she began to take stock of her life and what challenges she could take on that she hadn't before, especially since she had a pretty good idea of what acting would continue to look like for her. This quiet exit is on brand for Portia de Rossi, who, despite her openness about some aspects of her life, has a record of being pretty quiet in public commentary. In her interview with DeGeneres, the couple commented on de Rossi's aversion to press and talk shows. De Rossi has said that her private life is hers and hers alone, but the media tries to get as close a look into celebrity relationships and homes as they possibly can. As the actor explained on her wife's show, about the only thing you can control is how you respond publicly. De Rossi has certainly exercised a great deal of control over her own public actions and reactions, even when controversy erupts around her. For example, she was noticeably absent when the New York Times sat down with the other major cast members of Arrested Development to discuss the accusations of sexual misconduct and verbal abuse against Jeffrey Tambor. She was also mostly silent when her spouse became the focus of a toxic workplace scandal in 2020. DeGeneres has since described the quietly supportive De Rossi as her rock during that time.
Jirasi's understated personality might be why you still see her in a bit of Arrested Development Season 5. Jirasi once joked that creator Mitch Hurwitz essentially ignored her when she quit and wrote her into the fifth season anyway. She and Hurwitz had a good, supportive conversation when she quit. And then suddenly, she was in five more episodes. But that's all right with her. Darasi explained that Arrested Development, the show she loves so much and whose cast she has referred to as her other family, is the only exception to her retirement from acting. But the actress appears in only a handful of episodes in the fifth season, and most of these appearances are pretty odd, to say the least. As fans quickly noticed, her scenes are mostly green-screened in this season. Lindsay Bluth also develops the habit of covering herself with a sheet, which means that de Rossi is largely hidden from view in a few scenes. Basically, she's as distant from Hollywood as she can possibly be. Portia de Rossi is still quite the celebrity, but she has now capitalized on her art appreciation to start a high-end art printing business, an online gallery called General Public. Whereas her iconic character on Arrested Development had the habit of pursuing new careers and pioneering obscure charitable events without much forethought, de Rossi put a lot of thought and effort into her venture, even teaming up with Fujifilm to create a new 3D technology the general public uses to print its recreations. She's also involved in a lot of philanthropy, especially animal-related, from the Best Friends Animal Society to The Gentle Barn. She and her wife are responsible for the Ellen DeGeneres Wildlife Fund, and the two travel to Rwanda in 2019 to officially break ground on the Ellen DeGeneres campus of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. If you see a gorilla, just don't point at it. It's safe to say de Rossi has stayed busy, even as she takes her creative talents in a new direction. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.